Hi. Many people have been asking me about financial literacy and why I think it is so important. When I look at where we are coming from, we as Ugandans, we as East Africans, we as Africans, why are we so far behind, especially compared to the Western world or to the Asian world for that matter, who have come from behind and also zoomed right past us? I think largely it's to do with financial literacy. What do I mean? Many of you have got degrees. You graduate, whether as a doctor, as a lawyer, as a social administrator, a general degree, but you don't understand the language of money. The language of money is a bit more complicated than probably as complicated as love, where you've got to quote it. You quote this wealth, you quote this money. It comes, it's hard to make money, but it's even harder to retain it unless you are financially literate. I've seen so many people fall into or stumble into money and then in a very short while they've lost it all simply because it went to their heads. They didn't have the ability to control it, to understand that language, to understand that you've got to always be frugal, to be careful with money. Because if you're not, you blow it and it goes away. It dissipates. It's like keeping water on your hands. You keep water there, however good and big your hands are, the more water you put, the more will just somehow disappear. So you've got to understand that language of money. Saving, without saving you cannot invest. What are the right kind of investments? Because so many people misinvest. And yes, it's an investment, but it's a misinvestment. It will take forever to come back. You have not done the numbers, and the numbers should lead you. Even some very smart people are so passionate about a certain idea, and they are actually very smart. But their passion for this idea that simply doesn't make money clouds their judgment and they end up losing all their money because they are in love with this idea. And yet the idea simply won't make money. You want to make a magazine today about the most beautiful cars and also the most beautiful shoes for women. Maybe the shoes for women might sell, but for cars, people love them, but they don't want to pay. The market is very limited in a small market like Uganda. But then you've got to put something else to spice it. You've got to find an angle that makes it commercial. So falling in love with an idea is not a very good thing. Let the numbers lead you. That's what financial literacy teaches you. You make a business plan, you do the research, and you make sure before you put a penny in a business, you know what you're talking about. Some areas it's a no-brainer because there's a big market out there and people are just hungry. There's no time for our business plan. There's no point in analyzing and over-analyzing. Leave that to the bankers, so to speak, and the lawyers. Get on with the business. Begin small and just grow it. People need milk. People need the basic commodities. They need food because we have 1.2 million children being born every day. So that's a creative market. Whatever is required, everybody has more or less the same tastes. Good quality things, if they have the income. There's a market for everything. Work your way up and provide the most basic things. We begin with food, shelter, security, and then quality of life, and then self-actualization. Maslow's, uh, Maslow's theory always holds. People will need locomotion, they need to move. They need shelter, they need houses. And as they get more money, they will spend more money go to better restaurants, live in better houses, travel in better cars. This market is always growing. You start with a Katochi phone, you will eventually want to have a smartphone, a much better phone than a smartphone, a very intelligent phone. So these things will always be there, but it's all about the financial literacy.